uh, for our Bloomberg radio and television audiences worldwide. We are joined now by Brian Moynihan. He is chair and CEO of Bank of America. Brian, thank you so much for joining us here at the end of the year. Well, David, it's great to have you here and happy holidays. And you can see our teammates out there working away on the trading floor here at One Brian Park. Yeah, and we're going to go back to the trading floor because you had quite a year in trading. But first, talk about the year overall. There have been a fair number of surprises given what some people expect at the beginning of the year. Certainly, the stock market has done very, very well. We had more interest rate hikes than we thought we would have. Unemployment has really held down pretty well. And we didn't have that recession so many people thought we would. Now, I must say, when I talked to you throughout the year, you kept saying the economy looks pretty strong. Some of your compatriots were saying, oh, no, hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that. So how'd you get it right? Well, we just we just try to follow the data, and I think there were unexpected events. There are unexpected events in every year, you know. And so, whether it was the regional banking crisis early on in, in the year, or whether it was another, you know, the Hamas uh, attack on Israel on October seventh, whether it was escalation, a continuation in Ukraine, whether it's the tensions in China, these are all things that happen. And they go on all the time. But what we look at is what goes on in our core customer base, and we try to talk about what is going on as opposed to what could go on, and plan for what could go on. And you know, that's been relatively strong and our team you know the spending continues even today at about four to five percent over last year half the growth rate of 22 to 21 showing the consumer has slowed down consistent with inflation getting under control consistent with uh, you know the Fed using the rate structure to choke off some of the activity and it's happened but overall it's been a decent year and the economy's grown unemployment stayed low and the bank's done very well let's talk about the consumer uh, you are the largest consumer banking operation in the country uh, we are in the middle toward, toward the end now the holiday season what are you seeing there I knew until now it was holding up pretty well where is it right now the consumer as of today sure so if you looked at it November of 23 over November of 22 and this is across about three or four hundred billion dollars a month of activity customers spending money out of their accounts that was up about four and a half percent. So far in December, it's holding about the same. And again, that's about half the rate it was growing at last year at this time versus the year prior. And that's because the overall activity is slowing down. What's been interesting is it's broadened out to all things. Uh, there were these periodic things since the pandemic. First, people hold up and bought stuff for their house. Then they started to go out and travel some. Then they went to restaurants. Then they had uh, uh, another set of travel, different kind of travel, international travel. And then they got to concerts and things. That's all through the system. And now you see it spending kind of evenly across. You know, retail stores are doing fine. Online sales are strong you know they're all up you know two three percent flattish two four percent depending on what it is so everything's kind of normalized for the u.s consumer and how they're spending money they are in very good shape they have money in their accounts they're employed and the wages are growing it doesn't mean inflation didn't affect certain parts of the of the uh, 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 american uh, public hard but in general when the unemployment rate is still in the mid threes to mid to upper threes, that is a very strong place for the consumer, but it has slowed down. You say they're in good shape. That's what I was going to ask you. They're spending money. Can they afford it? What are you seeing in terms of their bank balances? I believe those have come down some. Yeah. How fast are they coming down? So it's, it's a little bit of a, two different types of customers. For consumers that had a lot of excess cash, of course, when the rate they could get on that cash went from 25 basis points to 5% plus, guess what it did? It moved the market. So the very upper balances of consumer and our wealth manager customers move the market. But if you look at the consumers that the accounts are more the money coming in and out, they're still sitting with multiples of what they had pre-pandemic. So a cohort of consumers that had between two and five thousand dollars in their accounts pre-pandemic average about thirty two, thirty four hundred. They're now still sitting with about thirteen thousand accounts. It has come down from a peak of thirteen four down to about twelve eight. So it's come down a bit, but still much higher than it was before. And that's due to all the stimulus and stuff and then you know holding on to that. Where they go next is going to be more interesting question. They've slowed down their spending because things got more expensive. They slowed down their spending because they got worried a little bit more worried about their job. They slowed down their spending because the rates on car loans or all the things uh, became more expensive. But they're still spending more than they did last year. And that that's that's a decent setup for a soft landing. Are you seeing any softness in, in consumer credit? I mean, are you seeing balances go up? Delinquencies yeah. go up? Well, balances have gone up in credit cards back to where they were pre-pandemic for us and the industry. And people are like, oh my gosh, and they're up above that even that. But if you just did for the size of the economy, they're actually still down. And so the consumer capacity to borrow is strong. Mortgage, mortgages are all locked in at low rates that the 
the best asset for a lot of households is actually their low interest cost liability. It's, it's <laughs> mixing two different things on the balance sheet, but the reality is, is a 3% mortgage is an asset for people right now because it means their payments haven't moved. So that's good news. The home equity borrowings are down for us from 30 billion to 20 some billion. That means that they're not using that equity in their house and there's more equity in their house. On the credit cards, the delinquencies are really consistent with the 19 and everybody says, well, it's back to 19. 19 was one of the best credit years in the company's history and the industry's uh, credit history. So that's a very strong place. Um, and so we feel good about consumer credit. And as long as the employment levels stay there, it's a little hard to believe that you'd have it. Now, lower FICO scores, you hear people talk about a little more noise, but ge the general consumer is basically a prime borrower and, and they're doing fine. What about the commercial side? Uh, you're very big in middle market, small and medium sized enterprises. Is there low demand? What's the sentiment there? So, uh, you know, if you think about the consumer, we keep growing customers, keep growing households, keep growing this company. If you think about on the commercial, we keep growing customers, you know, more, more logos, as our teammates call it, you know, companies that we do business with, a record number this year. The thing about it is they're not using the lines as much. So the loan balance growth on the commercial side has been a little bit sluggish, a little bit flattish. Looks like it'll bounce around in low single digits this quarter. Now, why is that happening? Line usage before the pandemic for middle market clients was 40%, dropped to 30%, got back up to 36%, and it fell a couple hundred basis points. Why would companies borrow less at this point? They're worried about final demand. It's also a lot more expensive. So the Fed is having the impact, which is a loan that was like 3% to 4% is now 7 to 8, you know, 7 to 8%. People think about using it. So the line uses is down, meaning that they're not being as aggressive buying equipment or hiring people or extending inventories, mostly because they're, they're worried about the economy slowing down. And when we say a soft landing, it doesn't mean the economy goes into recession. It says no, but what we're, what our team is saying, Candace Browning Platt and research team, is that we're slowing from almost a you know, 4 to 5% growth rate to 1% growth rate is still a major slowdown, and the business community is, is wrestling with that right now, trying to get that balance right. Uh, one of the big surprises this year came toward the end of the year with the Fed uh, decision and then the news conference with Jay Powell that really signaled, at least to most of us, yeah, they're really seriously considering rate cuts. It looks like they're coming next year. Were you surprised, and why do you think they did it? Do you think they're seeing data about the economy that it's slowing faster than we appreciate? Yeah, so let's let's talk about what our economists tell me, and, and we could feed in. We have a, the number one research team in the business, and Candace and the team done a, do a great job. They're basically they just shifted yesterday, literally, um, and they moved to more rate cuts in 24. But the real key was what do they see in the economy, and they basically have moved from a half a percent growth rate annualized for the first three quarters of next year up above one percent. So they've they've softened their soft landing, let's just say that, and by doing that, they've said when the Fed is seeing inflation slow as fast as it is, they basically think we get down to low twos in inflation by the year and next year, 24, and, and it carries into 25. The Fed needs to bring the rate structure down. They're saying basically 200 basis points of rate cuts, 100 next year and 125, which still leaves you at three and a quarter, three and a half. Now, the last time we were fundamentally at that rate structure was almost it was 18 years ago by the time we get there. So we've had a long stretch of very low rates, except for what happened very recently. And so that fueled a lot of activity. And now the rate structure can be fundamentally higher. It's more structurally sound. And the Fed is, pivot, is it's not really a pivot to say we got to normalize this because we're seeing the economy and the inflation come in. Not done yet, but all indications are doing there. And everything we can see that consumer spending is consistent with a 2% inflation economy. That level of spending growth in our customers was where it was in 17, 18, 19, when the Fed raised rates to bring the economy back in sync. Uh, so the stock market did pretty well this year up until that Fed decision, and then it's off to the races since then. Uh, your trading desk has done particularly well this year. To give us a sense of where it is right now. Are you going to finish the year as strongly as you have been going this quarter so far? Well, you can, from your lips to their ears, <laughs> so they, they've got a few weeks left. No, they're doing fine. We said that they'd be up uh, up year over year, which is kind of counter to the trend in the market. They, Jimmy DeMar and the team have done a great job. And what's interesting, it's, it's rounded out, and it's fixed income, it's equities. And it's much more consistent. They've, I, I'm not quite sure it's exactly true, but they've basically made money every single trading day this year. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's been volatility, there's been news, there's been this. And, they've, and that's because they have a balance in the business in a way that goes through. We increased the size of the, of the business three or four years ago under Tom Montag's leadership and Jimmy's leadership, and that, that's uh, borne fruit. And they are keep gaining market share, and they're doing a great job. So I'm glad you raised that, because three or four years ago, I was here with you at Bank of America, and you said, you know what, you're going to have to devote more capital, more people into that business. You did it. You seem to be having success. Going forward, is there yet more capital that you're going to allocate into trading? Yeah, as, as long as they can get the returns. You know, at the end of the day, our, our return on equity is 15% you know, as a company. 
this business because all the regulations and the capital is a little lower than that, but it's well above our cost of capital. As long as they can keep deploying it, we'll keep pushing capital because it's a great business and great format, and we're gaining market share, honestly, across the world. And it's a global business, so it can access a much deeper client base. The team's done a great job, so they'll keep getting more commitments right. consistent with them being able to get the returns on them. One last one, Brian. Are you concerned at all that the market's maybe overreacting to what they heard from Chair Powell? I, th I think he's got this challenge that, you know, he, he was, you know, the Fed in our own mission was late to cutting off inflation. Now he's been careful not to be late to stop cutting off inflation. And the market's going to ebb and flow. But I, I think people have to be a little careful. This is trading talk. This is, you know, the 10 year moving around between, you know, 390 and 450 and 470. It's not the real economy. The real economy is still heavily impacted by the overall rate level. It's very restrictive, and it's still coming through the system. Against that, we still have a lot of stimulus coming through the system. Yeah. You know, the Infrastructure Bill, the CHIPS Act, the IRA, those are all still coming through the system. So that's yeah. the tug of war he's up against. But overall, it, it, we believe he's engineered a soft landing through the interest rate environment. Brian, thank you so much. That's Brian Moynihan. He's chair and CEO of Bank of America.